Amy from the blog of WaspingLife.com, and today I want to share with you our minimalist farmhouse kitchen. So we moved on to our house a few months ago, and we're still kind of unpacking and getting everything exactly where we want it to be. But our kitchen is something that we use all the time, and it was really important that we got it done right the first time. So today I want to share with you just a really small, organized, and useful kitchen. You don't have to have a huge kitchen to have something that works well and functions properly. And so even though ours is old, it's original or semi-original to our house that was built in 1942, it's been updated slightly. It does have original cabinets. And so function of those aren't super awesome. They're a little hard to pull open, but we can manage until we can maybe create something that is a little bit more functional a few years down the road. But I have honestly really enjoyed having a smaller space um, to work. It's just as functional as my big kitchen just because it's laid out nicely. But so let's get started checking out our kitchen. Our biggest challenges that we have in this house is being able to store food, especially coming the summer months when we plan on growing and preserving a lot more food. It's going to be a little bit more challenging for us to be able to find the space in order to do so. All the cabinetry over here is actually food. Some of it is canned stuff. Some of it is just like, you know, things that we eat every day, but we don't have a whole lot of room to store a lot of extra. That's something that we are kind of having to figure out and develop a way to be able to do that. Uh, we do have a laundry room that is connected to the kitchen and we are going to be renovating that space because we have to replace the water heater, kind of replace some of the old cabinetry that is not functioning and maybe turn it into more of like a butler's pantry. So not only will it be a place to store our muddy boots and all the other things, we'll also be able to store our canned foods and things um, that we buy in bulk. It'll make food preservation a little bit easier. For someone that has a small kitchen, there are some things that you want to think about and consider um, when bringing things in is how often you use something and how useful it is. For me, I only keep the things in here that I use on a consistent weekly basis. Some of the other things that we are only going to be pulling out during the summer, I have put in a different storage area. And then once we convert the laundry room, it might go in there. And also just not have too much extra stuff. So in our last house, when we got our Instant Pot, I automatically got rid of our slow cooker. We didn't need both the Instant Pot and the slow cooker since you can use the slow cooker function on the Instant Pot. And then also, like pots and pans, I don't have a lot of extra and a lot of bulk. I just have the basics, just have what we use. Pans for baking, I only have two. I just don't feel the need to having like a bunch of them. If I make cookies, I'll just have to make them in batches. It's not a big deal to me. Also, when it comes to cooking, I like stainless steel, cast iron, because you can use that in multiple foods. You can put it in the oven and bake with it. Same with my Dutch oven. It's super useful. I can use it for not only making big batches of soup, but I also use it for bread baking. Another thing is convenient storage. I have these like coffee and sugar and flour canisters in which I store tea. I have a mouse that really likes my husband's tea and so we have to keep it somewhere our mouse can't get it. Now don't get me wrong we do have kind of like junk drawers things that we do keep kind of that extra stuff you know you need sometimes but not that frequently and so we do have a drawer full of like ice cream scoops and popsicle molds things like that so that is there. I absolutely love our open shelving. We had open shelving in our old house, um, which had a much bigger kitchen, but open shelving makes it very useful to be able to grab things easily. Especially when you have guests over, you can easily grab stuff. They can see things. You can, they can see to grab their plates. Same with our glassware, and we have multi-purpose items. So our glassware is obviously not only something we drink out of, but also the mason jars. We can use those, you know, if I want to store something in there. I like to buy things that can be stacked. We have stackable baking dishes. So there's three baking dishes. I do nesting bowls, the vintage Pyrex bowls. They're useful. I can stack them into each other and so they don't take up a lot of space. Also, I find it really important to not have a lot of clutter and things on my countertop. It's helpful for my mind. It's easier to work when you just don't have a lot of clutter toasters and apply, like small appliances out. So I like to hide those. The one thing that does really stay out besides like the flour and the cutting boards is our Berkey water filter. And this is important to us because we want to filter out our water even though we are on well water. It worked amazing in the city when we have high chlorine in our water. Um, but also we have well water so we do want to filter out any bacteria or things like that. This is an important tool that we like to use in our kitchen. 
and we use it constantly. Cleaning products, I keep all of our cleaning products underneath the sink and honestly we just don't use very much. We make most of our cleaning products homemade and so you just don't need very many ingredients. Um, I have multiple recipes on my channel and also on my blog that you can find on how we clean our house naturally for really inexpensive and also you only really need a handful of ingredients so it's really really simple. In our cabinets we keep things that are not so pretty <laughs> and our upper cabinets will keep things like our water bottles, um, sippy cups, also kids plates, other not so pretty mugs or cups. While we're trying to keep plastic to an absolute minimum, we do use plastic for some long-term storage of bulk items. So we do use Ziploc bags occasionally. And so we have those in there, tons of glass storage, but I do keep that in there too next to the kid plate. Right above the oven, conveniently placed, is going to be all of my spices and baking goods that I could easily reach while I am making food. <laughs> and I've organized them by putting them in some inexpensive baskets that I got at a local store. Above that is a basket that I keep all of my blogging stuff. You know, you need a lot of plates and bowls. I put it in that basket, which is an amazing way to store things, organize and keep things that otherwise might just fall out. And this other cabinet across, we have all of our water bottles, our sippy cups, and then also a lot of our supplements that we take, kind of like our natural medicine cabinet, I would call it. And then I have some essential oils I use more frequently, and just a couple other things that aren't so pretty that I don't really want out and about. Something I do keep on our countertops that is not super pretty is a galvanized bowl that we use to put our scraps in, and these scraps are to feed the chickens and the goats, so it's a great way to save on garbage. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining me today on our small kitchen tour. I really hope you got some tips and tricks in how to create a small, functional, useful, and organized kitchen. Just goes to show you don't need a lot of space for a functional and working kitchen. We cook all of our meals from scratch here, and I have really enjoyed using this small space. We are going to be content with what we have and use it to its full potential. Thank you so much for coming by. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I'll be showing more farmhouse tours, homesteading tips, and our farm life. Thanks for stopping by.